and um, we won another debate against a atheist point man zero he lost the debate so we're going to go through that if you'd like to hear the whole debate you could download it on mp3 right below this video now what i'm going to do after i get on this uh on ramp here what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through what he said point by point and then I'm going to point out some major errors on how he lost the debate. Now, Point Man Zero is one of these atheists that always goes around harassing Christians. I went to his YouTube channel. I do believe Point Man Zero believes in God. It's just that his God is Nephilim free. <laughs> He's got all types of Nephilim free videos. He doesn't like Nephilim free. So Point Man Zero does have a God. It's just that his God is Nephilim free. He's obsessed with Nephilim free. So um, anyways, he comes into the uh, my chat room, which is right below here also. And I challenge him to a debate, okay? Oh, I've been wanting to debate this guy for a long time because he's one of these loudmouth atheists and usually the bigger mouth they have <laughs> the worse they are in debate and my my theory proved true that he was horrible in debate I would say it's probably the easiest debate I've won out of like 54 debates so let's go through it okay first of all Here's a little tip for you atheists out there or agnostics. When you're going to go into a debate, know what you are. <laughs> Here's a good idea. <laughs> know what you are. When you hear the debate, Point Man Zero didn't even know what he was. We were asking him, okay, uh, before you, we start the debate, you know how you say if you're a Christian theist, if you're a deist, if you're an atheist agnostic, a lot of people don't know you. Before you start the debate, you kind of introduce yourself. You're going to hear Point Man Zero very confused about what he is. First of all, you're going to hear him. It's unmistakable audio. When he says he's an atheist. But then, he flip-flops. I'm not kidding you, like within 10 minutes. And then he says he's an agnostic. And then um, he goes back again to being an atheist and then he says he's an agnostic. This is all just a, even before we even started the debate. It's just madness. Now, let's talk about that. I might take up the full 15 minutes of this video because this, this debate, it was hilarious um, how horrible he did. Now, my theory on why he didn't want to commit to being an atheist or an agnostic is because he knows he can't defend either position properly. He doesn't have any good arguments for it. So in his mind, he's thinking, well, if I can just play it safe and not take a position, you know, then I might be okay. But you can't do that in a debate. So he was in a quandary there. Now, so finally, I guess, you know, who knows what if he's an atheist or an agnostic? I don't think he even knows. He certainly doesn't know. He's going back and forth, back and forth. So finally what happens, because it was like five minutes and we still weren't starting the debate because he was giving us different answers on what he is. You'll hear it on the audio. It's absolutely bizarre. Finally, um, we say, okay, well, you're an agnostic. And then he says, well, I, I'm like an atheist. So, you know what? He don't even know what he is. So we start the debate. And um, the topic of the debate was, is he's supposed to prove that it's impossible for the Christian God to exist. Impossible. Not just uh, 
probably not so, or most likely not so, he claimed, you'll hear him claim it on the audio, that it's impossible for the Christian God to exist. This is what he claimed. So I said, okay, uh, it's definitely not impossible. I'll show you, it's clearly possible. I know God exists, the Christian God. So all I had to do was show that it's possible for the Christian God to exist. Now remember, if I get him to admit this, this adds a lot to my side of the debate, and I get him to admit it at least two times in the debate. Okay, so we start the debate. I go through, because I want to really uh, do a good job, I go through the ontological argument, the cosmological argument, the teleological argument, objective values, the historical person, Son of God, Jesus Christ, and experiential reality, you know how you experience God within your life as a Christian. So, he has to debunk all those. If he doesn't debunk them, then in debate, it stands. It stands like he agrees with it. He has to disagree with it and debunk it. He fails to do so on each point. In fact, he ignores objective value, the objective value argument. He ignores Jesus Christ. He doesn't even talk about Jesus Christ. Instead, he talks about Bigfoot, Elvis, I think, and, Uf and UFOs, uh, which would be fine if the debate topic was on that. Uh, what he should have done was shown either that Jesus never existed or his disciples were delusional, something like that. He, he did not do that. He talked about UFOs and psychics and stuff like that. that have nothing to do with the historical person, Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ goes into my column, the Christian theism column, a debate. On the ontological argument, he doesn't even debunk that. He doesn't even talk about that. The ontological argument goes into my side. That's two points I win. On the cosmological argument, he doesn't hit on that. The cosmological argument is the argument that whatever begins to exist has a cause. And I showed scientifically, and I even it was a scientific argument, that scientists are saying, by far the majority of them, that the universe had a beginning. And I extrapolated the cause for the universe, okay? So I go through the cosmological argument, I show you, it can't be a natural cause. He was unable to show how the universe began naturally, since there was no pre-existing matter, energy, even space and time were not existing at that point. So the cosmological argument goes onto my side. We got the ontological argument, Jesus Christ, ob objective values, he didn't hit on that. Now he did hit on, let me get over here real quick. He did hit on the teleological argument that I brought up. Unfortunately, he conceded a lot on the teleological argument. The teleological argument talks about how our universe is fine-tuned to sustain our lives here. Every scientist in the world agrees on that. You can't deny it. In fact, I got Point Man Zero to admit that even if you change one of those constants, you could actually change just one and you could destroy life. No life. He admits that on audio. So the universe is clearly fine-tuned for our existence. Now here's where it gets bizarre. Here's how he tries to debunk the fine-tuned argument, but it, it failed. He says possibly there could be other areas of the universes that are also fine too. Hold on a second, my nose. I got allergies and boy my nose starts itching. He said possibly there could be other areas of the universe that are fine too. And I said, well, if there were other areas of the universe that were fine-tuned, that would just make them fine-tuned also. In fact, the um, odds of the universe being fine-tuned in somewhere else 
would actually go ahead and even be more evidence for design. Because then, hold on a second, it sounds like riding. Okay, because then what happens is you just have two areas of the universe that are fine-tuned. But we agree that they're both fine-tuned. I mean, the odds are even smaller that they're fine-tuned if you got two fine-tuned universes. I mean, think about what the odds that are. Of course, we don't see that. So his argument was basically based on faith, and even if it was true, it doesn't change the fact that our universe is fine-tuned. He admits that even if we change some of the fine-tuned constants, life would cease to exist. So he admits that. So fine-tuning, by, by him talking about fine-tuning, it actually, he added to my argument and even helped it. So fine-tuning, he did not say it was due to dumb luck or chance, but there's only three reasons why the fine-tuning exists, guys. Either dumb luck or chance, physical necessity, and I'm hitting a lot of bumps right here, or design. He couldn't show that it was due to dumb luck or chance. He couldn't show that it was due to physical necessity. I showed that it was clearly due to design. The more plausible, rational choice was design. Okay, what else? Um, oh, and then one thing that he says, which was totally wrong, I don't... He started talking about the fine-tuned universe being fine-tuned and it's a one out of one chance that it would be fine-tuned. Huh? That's not true. I went through some of the constants for him because he said, well, where are these fine-tuned constants? He didn't even know which constants were fine-tuned. So me being the sweet, lovable, huggable, kind Christian that I am, I rifled off a few fine-tuned constants for him. There's like 50 of them. So we gave him a free little education on the fine-tuned constants. Now, he was not able to show that it was impossible for the Christian God to exist. In fact, he brought up suffering in the world. And I showed him that clearly God does allow suffering. Look what happened with Job. Look what happened with Paul in the Bible. Look what happened to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, hey, you know, if you want to follow me, pick up your cross. He didn't say pick up your steak and lobster. He said pick up your cross. So, so suffering in this world is compatible with Christian God. And you, look what's happening in Africa. He brought up Africa. I said, of course there's suffering in Africa. And check out this uh, guy's windshield right here. Of course there's suffering in Africa. Of course they are and guess what else is happening in Africa now because of that all kinds of people are coming to Jesus Christ look at this guy's uh, windshield it says try Jesus now dot org so suffering actually can bring more people to God and God's will is that all of us come to a loving knowing relationship with God. That's his will. Look what happened in China um, after the oppression of the good people of China. Now Christianity is exploding in China after they were going through all that suffering. He admits, he bows his head in defeat and he admits that yes, this world is compatible with the Christian God. And yes, on his concession, he has lost the debate. Christian theism wins another debate. He admits this world operates very much so, very uh, in compatibility with the existence of the Christian God. You'll hear it right here below, folks. Uh, that's like debate now, what is it, number 5354 that we've won. The atheists got nothing. They really don't, guys. In fact, during the debate, Point Man Zero was saying, well, maybe God's an evil God. And it just seems like atheists want um, God to be a way that they want. My, my opinion is I love God just the way he is. I love God just the way he is. God bless you guys. Click below here if you'd like to hear the debate where Point Man Zero loses.
Have a great week.